Okay, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to this lightning talk. My name is Lu Jing. I'm currently working for Fujitsu. And today I'll be quickly talking about our configuration mapping tool that we created to help operators making new configuration files more easily while they are doing a fast forward upgrade. And I would also like to acknowledge that this work goes to two of my colleagues, although they cannot join us today. So before we talking about our tool, first I want to introduce like what is fast forward upgrades. So before the Denver PTG, people has been talking about skip release upgrades, where basically we do the upgrade from N release to N plus X release, where X is normally greater or equal than two. And the main point is we do not need to go through the releases in between. But at the Denver PTG, people has tend to agree that this is not doable right now because of some database migration issues. So sadly, we have to go through all the releases in between. So we kind of redefine the name to fast forward upgrades in order not to just make people confused between these terms. And so the reason we need fast forward upgrades is According to the very recent user survey, most of the customers are still running OpenStack in quite old releases, like Newton, Metaca, or even Liberty. And OpenStack, like upgrading OpenStack, turns to be quite painful and problematic. So operators do not really willing to upgrade it every six months. So like making this upgrade into a scratch is kind of a requirement for the operators. But still, when we are trying to do this, we have several issues. And we try to list up some of them. People are quite, people are discussing recently a lot. The first one is how can we guarantee the zero affection to the data plane? Which means while we are doing the data plane and control plane upgrade, we cannot affect our running VMs. And normally people solve this problem by doing the live migrating of the VMs between number of compute nodes and secondly is, since we are running several, we are jumping through several releases, how can we reduce the database upgrade time? Because we really do not want to see like upgrading database for two or three days. And at last is, while we finally reached our target release, how can we create the new re configuration files? Because even in adjacent releases, the configuration files tend to change a lot. So this is what our talk is going to target. So we created this automated configuration generation tool for the operators. And while we are researching about like how to make this tool, we try to summarize several issues while we are trying to create the new configuration file. The first one is not all the configuration options are well documented. Sometimes you need to go through all the release nodes and some, even some source codes in order to find out what are the configuration changes from one release to another. And secondly is there are several one to multiple or multiple to one configuration changes. An example is in the Oslo messaging section, starting from Newton release to later on, we do not use the four rabbit and rabbit related options and we squash them into one transport URL. And also in some releases, we change the key names in the configuration options. An example shown here is in Cinder. So what we eventually want to do is, an example is if we are sitting in the end release environment, we just input this config mapping file, which we intend in the N plus two release. And eventually we can get this N plus two configuration file, which, work, which will work perfectly for our N plus two environment. And of course there are some processes and some other additional files that we will need in order to do this. So starting from the following slides, I'll be briefly introduce what are the, all the files and processes necessary to do this work. The first is the namespace file. This file is being currently declared and maintained in each project, and it contains the project specific configuration options. And the second one is kind of like intermediate object that we used. It's called the conf object. It's basically a config opt instances of the oslo.config, and it stores all the configurations of the running services. And currently, it's widely used in almost all the OpenStack projects for us to get the configuration values. And 
Next, this is the config mapping file that we wrote by ourselves. It's a YAML file which will be maintained by each project. And so this YAML file will help us to mapping all the configurations from the old release to the new release. And what we want to do here is like, for example, if our target release is in plus two, so no matter from which releases we want to upgrade this OpenStack cloud, no matter it's n minus two, n minus one, or n, we only need to maintain the same config mapping file. And in this case, when we are trying to upgrade to n plus three, we only have to make minor changes to this n plus two release file. A little bit more details about this config mapping file is, an example I'm using here is the one that I explained, the Rabbit, MQ, Rabbit MQ's cases. So this is in the Neutron's configuration files from Newton release to Pike release. Just by the way, this is what we have already tested. So we tested from Newton release to Pike release. And this is what the configuration mapping file would be look like. It's pretty straightforward that we have two sections. The first one is the decorated options, and the second one is the new options. So you just basically need to fill in all these blanks in these two sections, and this config mapping file will help us to map all the old release, old, old configs to the new configs. And some, in the previous figure, I showed like there are two processes that we need to do. The first process is the retrieve and load all the old configuration files. So in some, in our road, in the Python code that we wrote, we just call the generator module in the oslo.config to help us retrieve all the old configuration options. And we load them into the config object and put them into the correct sections. Here, one thing to notice is that there are some projects which contains dynamic sections, such as Cinder. So we also need to take some additional measures to take care of those sections. And the second process is how we map all these new config options. So this one is also taken care of by the config mapping file. So it's pretty straightforward. We just load what we have already got in the config object and then map it to the new release configuration file. And what our plan is, we are now negotiating with the Oslo team. We really want to integrate our two processes into the oslo.config so that if you operators want to use our tool, they do not really need to download our code and install it in their environment, you just call oslo.config. And also we are negotiating with several projects because we want to put this configuration mapping file to be maintained by each project. And then later on, for each code changes that will need to change the configuration options, this corresponding configuration change has to go to this config mapping file as well. And also, the last one is quite, is a bit more in the future thing, like we really want to create a new gate to ensure that the newly added or updated configurations will not break our configuration mapping file. So since it's a 10 minute talk, I do not think I have time to take any questions, but if you do have any questions, you can just come to me later on. I'll be staying around this afternoon as well. Thank you so much. I hope this one can help you a little bit. Thank you.